So earlier today, I made my point very clear about this case that happened at the Supreme Court today concerning Amdi Kanu. I thought I was the only person that had that kind of opinion. But listen to Chief Dan Ulasi and hear what really happened in the Supreme Court because this man was live and direct in the court. Just take a listen to him and hear his own contribution or uh, let me not even say much. Watch this video. Make sure say you share and make other pussy. At the end of this video, you get waiting and want to talk. Can come? Well, if in recent times you're listening to the commentaries of most Nigerians, there is now a process of judicial rascality. Because if the Supreme Court condemns all the processes, especially the rendition that brought him back to Nigeria, and you're not asking that he goes back to the court of, uh, I mean, Federal High Court for the trial to start, I feel it's in a lot of injustice. It's a lot of injustice in all forms of jurisprudence. So uh, all I would say that we just leave it in the hands of God at the end of the day. Um, how can somebody... Uh, it's difficult to make a comment because when you listen to the judgment when it started, it was clear that they accepted the illegality committed by the federal government of Nigeria in all aspects of it. And yet you went on to this, you know, to remove the judgment of the appeal court because of lack of um, jurisdiction which they learned about the lower court. I don't think that is fairness in any consideration, but they say that they are final because it's the Supreme Court. They are also infallible because it is the final court of the land. So we will go back to the Federal High Court and hopefully we will probably request that a bail is granted at that level. So for me, it's a win-win affair. At least something has seriously started and I hope that uh, the process at the Federal High Court will be, you know, that will be expedited so that uh, these things can, the young man can come and be useful to his society. But the only unfortunate thing is that the insecurity in Nigeria, and especially in the Southeast, will be worsened off because people don't believe what is happening in this country anymore. So if the, court of, the Supreme Court of Nigeria is not even looking at the implications of what is going on, Boko Haram is on, uh, bandits are on, iPod is on. So where is the country that we're all looking forward to? May God bless this country. Thank you very much. For the camera, sir. For those who do not know, sir. Sorry? For those who do not know, sir. Your name for the camera, sir. Your name? I'm Chief Dan Olasi. I'm Chief Dan Olasi and uh, an Igbo small statesman. <laughs> you know. well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, sir. Yes, my name is Right Honorable What's Obi Agocha, representing the good people of Iguano, Umaha North, Umaha South Federal Constituency of Abia State. I am the direct representative to Mazi Nabdekam. It's indeed a very sad day today. If you looked at the judgment, the court was uh, showed empathy in the way the rendition was conducted. The torture, the treatment meted out to Mazi Nambikam. It's just a technical matter, uh, just like the councils for Mazi Nambikam has stated. But I'm sure they are going back to the drawing board, uh, starting again from the High Court all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is sympathetic uh, to the plight of uh, Mazi Nambikam. And I, I believe there's hope at the end of the tunnel. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Come to think of it, after all this whole thing the Supreme Court did, they still did not penalize the federal government for breaking the law. The Supreme Court, according to BBC Pigeons, admitted that bringing him back from Kenya broke international law. Invading his home broke his rights, human rights, violated his human rights. Withdrawing his bail broke the law. This is now confirmed, and the Supreme Court have now confirmed it. But what did the Supreme Court do about the people who have committed this multiple offense? Nothing. And then they went back and said, the same accused person, because he's helpless, because he, he has nobody that can fight for him, because he's been oppressed by people who are power, power drunk. In this case, I can even categorically tell you that the, even the Nigerian Supreme Court, the Nigerian judiciary is part of the people who are who are in the in the game of the abuse of power. Because if they are not in the game of abuse of power, the Supreme Court will not come out and point out areas where this person's rights have been violated, but yet insist that this person must be tried by the same body that violated his own rights. 
So you are putting him under trial by his own oppressors. So you want the same people who want to take his life, or who went to invade his house to take to wipe his family, the same people who went to Kenya to kidnap him as you admitted, to kidnap him from Kenya, you still want him to still undergo trial from them. And then you expect you, you expect anybody to expect justice to, to come out of that system. That must be the biggest joke of the year. Or maybe of the century. Since I was born, Nigerian judiciary has never been so low. Maybe under the leadership of this Ariwola, a lot of accusations, a lot of allegations have been raised and none, none have been debunked, obviously making them all true. This Nigerian judiciary right now is already a joke. If Ariwola does not know that, let him know it. If Latif Fagbemi does not know that, let him know it today. Both him, Bola Ahmed, in all ramifications, they've all joined hands together to destroy the rest of the, the fabrics of Nigerian constitution. And if they continue on this on this ground as they are going, <laughs> they should know that many countries have undergone revolution and Nigeria might not be different. That is just the truth. Nigeria might end up not being different if we don't cease from all these illegalities and abuse of law. If we don't cease from it. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs>